welcome to the Module 5 lab, and congratulations on making it this far. So I think you're going to find this lab is pretty simple compared to some of the other labs that we've done. And I'm going to briefly go over how to complete the lab, which in this case will be developing features from dimensions to create a threaded shaft using feature turn. So pretty simple. Let's get started. So the first thing we want to create a new file and we'll be selecting the turn mill type, select OK. And now we'll be defining the properties of our stock. Our stock will be round. The outside diameter will be 1.250. The inside diameter will leave it zero. And the length will be three inches. Select next. We're going to use aluminum for our material type and the hardness will remain the default of 111. We'll select next. And at this point, we can select Finish. We, there's no other information that we need to identify uh, for our stock, with the exception of the Z-axis location. So um, in this case here, we're going to set the Z-axis location to 50 thousandths of an inch. In other words, there, there's going to be 50 thousandths of an inch of facing material that will be, need to be removed so that our face is trued at the zero Z-axis location. So we select 50 thousandths in the Z, uh, the Z axis box, and we select OK. So now let's go ahead and create the groove feature uh, that's associated with the threaded shaft that you see in, uh, in your uh, lab instructional material. So uh, item number seven in the steps menu is features, select turning, and we're going to create a groove. Select next. And our diameter, in this case here, this diameter needs to match the diameter of our stock. In this case here, our stock diameter is 1.250 or inch and a quarter. Now the depth of our groove will be 0 0.250. The width will also be 0 0.250. And at this point, we can select next. And now we need to specify the z-axis location for our groove and note that it's telling us that the uh, the leftmost part of the, uh, the the edge of the groove is going to be the dimension that we'll be specifying so in this case here we want to specify negative 1.250 for our z axis location and then we click finish and here are the features uh, or the uh, the dimensions that are associated with our groove. We can check those and everything's fine. And we select OK. And you'll see our groove is shown in the part view area. So the next thing that we want to do is create the facing feature. Again, the turning feature. Select Next. Click on the Face Radio button. Select Next again. And 50 thousandths of an inch is the thickness of our facing operation. We want to make sure our outer diameter is 1.250, which it is in this case here. And we can select Finish. Here's the face properties. The uh, view screen area looks correct. We'll select OK. So now we want to create the hole that goes through the, the uh, center of the part. So we will select Features again, Turning, hole radio button select next the depth of our hole is going to be one inch uh, and the outside diameter is going to be or in this case here the inside diameter of the hole is going to be 0 0.250 we'll select finish when that's completed and you'll see our hole appears in the part and we select OK and finally the last thing that we need to do is create the external threads. So we'll select seven for features, turning, threading radio button, select next. And we're going to be using a standard thread size in this case here. It's an outside or external thread. And we're going to select one inch 12 UNF for unified national fine thread. And we select next. And you'll see that the thread length will be one inch and that's really the, other than right hand or left hand, that's really the only uh, dimension that we need to identify for this particular uh, thread feature. 
So we'll select finish and you'll see our thread appears. Everything looks good. We click on okay. All right, so now let's see if all of these features um, look the way that they're supposed to when they're machined. So <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and select the view mode and switch over to the isometric view. And let's go ahead and go over to the simulation toolbar and select on the 3D simulation tab. I like to keep my simulation speed all the way down so that I can see these features being machined um, in, uh, individually um, to identify any potential issues. And then we'll go ahead and select the play button. See, there's our facing. Here's our grooving operation. There's the hole. And the thread's being cut. Multiple passes, and we are done. And this feature looks good. Or these features look good. So I like to go to the trackball view mode. And then if you click anywhere on the part and hold the left mouse button down, you can actually rotate this part around to get a better view of these features. And um, if I want to zoom in, say, on the groove, just simply roll in and rotate using the, uh, the, uh, the roller on the mouse to zoom in. And if you want to look at the thread profile, um, you can do that as well a little bit closer. So um, this all looks pretty good. So this is, in essence, once this is done and you verified that part, you can go back and eject the view and then uh, or eject the simulation and go back to the principal view. We want to look at it again from the top view. And we see our part again, once again, shown in two dimensional um, on the visual display. And we want to go ahead and save the part per the instructions in the lab and turn the file into your instructor. Mm -hmm.